Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. So cool to be back after our summer hiatus and be doing the catechisms in a year. We're on paragraph 643. We're coming to you from our home in Waikiki Beach. Um, just below me is St. Augustine's Catholic Church, so I'm actually right directly above the altar. So um, we're reading from paragraph 644 actually today, starting at 644. It's uh, uh, the story of Christ's resurrection. Um, how some of the disciples doubted. Aloha, Jack. Good to see you. Even when faced with the reality of the risen Christ, the disciples are still doubtful. They've seen him. So impossible did the thing seem. They thought they were seeing a ghost. Remember, we talked about yesterday how it wasn't a ghost because Jesus ate and drank with them. And St. Thomas touched his wounds. Aloha, Terry. Hi, Ben. Hi, Tony. Aloha, brother. Um, in their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering. Uh, it's kind of like you see that miracle touchdown throw with in overtime, you know, and how did that person make that catch? Multiply that times a million. That's how amazed they were and hard to believe. Could that really have just happened? You know, was he here? Thomas, who we love so much, um, the doubter as he was known, will also experience the test of doubt. And St. Matthew relates that during the risen Lord's last appearance in Galilee, some doubted. So it's a beautiful thing to doubt. And what I mean by that is it means you're being honest. Uh, when I used to teach confirmation class, I used to tell the young people there, it's okay to doubt. It's okay to ask questions. It's not okay. It's, a, it's okay to even think atheistic thoughts. It's not okay to mock the Lord, as you see a lot of atheistic uh, people do. They have a lot of angst towards God, so they tend to mock Christians and mock the Lord. It's okay to have doubts because it's in that element of doubt, as, as, as Saint Anselm would say, faith seeking understanding. So, or as uh, Peter said when he was thinking, Lord, I believe, but help, you know, Lord, I'm, I, I, if you want me to. If that's you, call me and I'll walk across and I'll join you. As he began to walk across the water, he began to sink. And, it and he sank because Jesus said he had little faith. But what was his response when he was sinking? Lord, help me. So even though we may have doubts, we can say to Lord, help me. And even as one of the, the, uh, the, one of the people in the gospel said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And, and this is what you're doing here today. We're, we're, we're pursuing... Uh, uh, with our spiritual, rational soul. God gave us a mind, and he loves that we have a mind. He wants us to reason. Come, let us reason together, That uh, the Lord says. Though your sins be as crimson, they'll be as white as wool. Though they be like scarlet, they'll be like the snow. So um, it's good to doubt. And it's because of Thomas's doubts that we know that when he touched the wounds of Christ, that Jesus rose from the dead, not just a ghost, but a spirit, soul, and body. Therefore, the hypothesis that the resurrection was re was produced by the apostles' faith or credulity will not hold up. On the contrary, their faith in the resurrection was born under the action of divine grace from their direct experience experience of the reality of the risen Jesus. Hey, Tony. Hey, hey, Nick. Great. Big news is coming soon, man. The School of Manliness is going to launch uh, in just another week. So we'll be giving you men in the man cave more information. The condition of Christ's risen humanity. By means of touch and the sharing of a meal, the risen Jesus establishes direct contact with his disciples. He invites them in this way to recognize that he is not a ghost and above all to verify that the risen body in which he appears to them is the same body that had been tortured and crucified for it still bears the traces of his passion. So think about this. When Jesus became incarnate, it wasn't just for the 33 years he would be here on earth. When we see Jesus face to face in heaven, he will still be forever all God and all man. We will see him in his resurrected glory. 
Think about what a gift Jesus gave to us, not just to become incarnate for 33 years, but for to forever become uh, all God while remaining, all man while remaining all God. What does that say to us? It speaks about the incomparable worth and dignity that he gives to us as human beings, that he would become like us. Not only did the author enter his book, the author became the lead character in the book. For at the same time, this authentic real body possesses the new properties of a glorious body, not limited by space and time, but able to present how and when he wills for Christ, how to be present, how and where he wills and when he wills for Christ's humanity can no longer be confined to the earth and belongs to the risen Jesus who enjoys the sovereign freedom of appearing as he wishes. You know, when you, when you read uh, Dante's uh, comedy, when he's going through purgatory, the key word in purgatory is freedom. The people there are so happy to be there as they go through, through the, re the rehabilitation and healing of their soul. They know that the, the pathway through Mount, to, of Mount Purgatory is a pathway of freedom. Jesus brings us freedom. He brings us liberty. So the Catechism says, for this reason too, the reason, the risen Jesus enjoys the sovereign freedom, what a great word, of appearing as he wishes, in the guise of a gardener or in other forms familiar to his disciples, precisely to awaken their faith. Aloha, Eve, good to see you. Christ's resurrection was not a return to earthly life, as was the case with the raisings from the dead that he had performed before Easter. In other words, that those were resuscitations, not resurrections. Jairus' daughter, the young man of Naim, Lazarus. These actions were miraculous events, but the persons miraculously raised eventually had to die, right? And if and died in, in trusting Jesus, they're awaiting the resurrection of their own bodies in heaven. These actions were miraculous events, but the persons miraculously raised returned by Jesus' power to ordinary earthly life. At some particular moment, they would die again. Christ's resurrection is essentially different. Aloha, Howard. Good to see you, man. Christ's resurrection is essentially different. In his risen body, he passes from the state of death to another life beyond time and space. At Jesus' resurrection, his body is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He shares the divine life in his glorious state so that St. Paul can say that Christ is the man of heaven. He's the new man. He's the new Adam. You know, two days ago, we celebrated my, my father's passing, uh, one-year anniversary. I was there with him. I had my hand on his heart as I felt it begin to slow down and quiet down and then stop. And what a glorious moment for my father who had such a beautiful faith in, in God because I knew that I knew that he was on his way to heaven. Uh, you know, like most of us, he maybe had has that rehabilitation point in purgatory, which is part of heaven. But he's on, he was he was he was he was there. He passed to a beautiful another way. My mother, uh, when she died, her last her last I was there with her, her uh, I came into her hospital room. I had brought her a dozen lays, a fragrant lays, and uh, the whole family had been there overnight. And I walked in just about dawn, and I opened up her curtains, and the rest of the family kind of came in. And right then, two bald eagles soared, um, soared through um, around her window in like a figure eight. And uh, I'm sorry, actually, a bald eagle came and soared around her room in a figure eight which is the, the, the bird of uh, my mother and father love. Their land was called Eagle's Rest, and they love the scripture verse. Uh, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And my father, when he was ordained as a Catholic deacon, the song he had played from my mother was Wind Beneath My Wings. And so when this eagle came and turned and soared, the whole family had just happened to be there just then. And then my mother's breath quickly faded and her last, as even though she had been in a coma for, for um, two weeks, uh, we heard her say, "Oh, 
oh, oh. So she had this glorious vision of heaven as her soul. So we have great hope in, in our resurrection, in our, in our going to heaven, and eventually our bodies being resurrected. Aloha, Dennis. Cindy says aloha to you. Um, that's it for today. We're going to be doing the catechism in a year. Now we just started up after our summer hiatus. And we're announcing that the School of Manliness, our brand new School of Manliness, is opening soon. So we'll give you the website and the links like that as soon as we, within the next week or so. Okay, aloha. God bless you. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Love you guys.